good to see you guys this morning. God's in the house. Man, I tell you, I am pumped today. Everything that happened on Wednesday is... It was obvious that uh, uh, I was not ready on Wednesday night. Uh, and the reason is, is because God wanted me to have this sermon today. Okay? And it's very important, okay, that each of us have, have an opportunity to hear. And some of us don't have that opportunity on Wednesday nights, right? So uh, it was made uh, pretty evident that it was supposed to be this morning. So you guys get ready, okay? You gotta get ready. Let's all stand, okay? And uh, <clears throat> I want you guys to just uh, start praying in the spirit. I want you guys to understand that as we move into God's presence this morning, that He wants us qualified. Amen. He wants us. He wants us uh, clean. He wants us pure. He wants us holy. He wants us righteous. So God, as we come before you this morning, God, I'll, I'll, Father, if there's any offense. If there's anything that we have between you and us, Father, may we get it right right now. May you forgive us, God. May you forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness and iniquity, God, because we we want to come into your presence this morning, God. We want you to feed us with the word of uh, life this morning, God. We want you to be glorified. We want you to be magnified God we want to hear your voice this morning God we want you to be edifying us this morning God edify the body of Christ in mission of grace this morning God because we need you this morning we don't need Pastor Mike we need you this morning God so as we press in as we uh, as we seek God you you promise those who seek you with all of our heart will find you and God, let, let us find you this morning in that special place. And as we come before you, God, may, may we have clean hands and a pure heart, O oh God. May we have a love for you and love for each other, God. That we may move. That we may dwell. And that we may have the peace of God that passes all understanding that guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Father, I speak life to the body of Christ this morning. I speak life in Jesus' name. I speak health in Jesus' name. I break off every chain in Jesus' name. I speak life and health in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against you will prosper. I apply the blood of Jesus over the body of Christ this morning, God. And I want you to be magnified in our hearts this morning. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way this morning. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. I pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Give God some praise.
we make this song as a prayer this morning. We need your holiness this morning, God. We need your righteousness this morning, God. We want our faithfulness to be like yours. <clears throat> so take our hearts. Form it. Take our minds, transform it. Take our will, conform it to yours, to yours, to yours, to yours. guys this morning. I've got a word this morning. It is I got both my dudes. <laughs> now before it was politically correct, you guys come up with some of the guys that she didn't know. How many of you guys remember Pat Diff? <laughs> He's not too young. <laughs> Did you want to just say that? Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> Gun smoke? Yeah, oh yeah. Now, <clears throat> it was really interesting that before 1970, Every episode of Matt Dillon opened up with what? Gunfire. Gunfire. Right? 
Yeah. After 1970, there was no longer an opening with a gunfire. After that, you seen him riding on a horse. You know why? They invented horses then. <laughs> They finally realized, they, they were thinking amongst themselves that maybe, you know, showing a sheriff shooting people all the time wasn't necessarily a good thing to see. But I'm telling you the truth, if you guys watch the movies, and I do constantly, I still have a, there's 20 episodes. Now, I think I'm on episode 11, or season 11. There was 20 years of gunsmoking. 20 years of some really decent, halfway moral uh, episodes. They always talk about honor. They always talk about you know doing the right thing. The bad guys always got hit, right? They always got put in jail. <clears throat> and the good guys always did the right thing, right? Well. The one thing that we're missing in today's culture is the right thing. And, and we're thinking, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're looking at Matt Dillon and we're saying that, you know, what it was doing was wrong. He was shooting people. What? Really? What it was doing was <clears throat> trying to keep peace. <clears throat> Now today, we would have a hard time with that. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, the sheriff is, is the sheriff, right? It's just we dramatize this violent thing. And, and now it's just gotten way out of hand because we don't know what's right. Am I right? We don't know what's right anymore. We're, we're kind of scared to, to find out the truth. Some of us don't want to know the truth. <clears throat> That's the way our society is. And we're being fed lies. I'm just being honest now. What was, what was good 20, 50 years ago is still good. Come on now. What my grandparents grew up on what my parents grew up on that was the right thing back 40, 50 years ago 70 years ago is still the right thing hello it's just it's not tolerated now which makes no sense because I thought truth was always truth and right was always right I'm just saying it's now kind of blurry that's why I want you guys to read the Proverbs. Because the Proverbs will help you understand what is right. Not in our eyes. We don't base rightness upon our eyes. Because we don't know what's right. No. We don't know. That's why the Bible says that we have to renew our minds. Right? That, that the reason why we're here the reason why we go to church, the reason why we're opening up a training center is so that we will understand and grow in the knowledge of Christ and be able to divide rightly what is right and what is not right. See? So I, I'm, <clears throat> I'm here as a teacher today to help us understand and rightly divide the truth. Amen? so that we will be able to stand. Because we were talking about confidence a few minutes, right? See, confidence comes by being able to stand on what we know is right. See, if you don't know what's right, you're not going to be able to stand. You know, because people are easily pushed in one direction or another. And how are you able to stand, and I'm saying stand, by being firm, being solid, being able to, to prove your ground? How are you going to be able to stand if you don't know what's right? 
the Bible clearly says, and we'll go over this, what is good, what is right. Amen? And I tried to speak it on Wednesday night, and I just, I was tired. I was overwhelmed. If you guys understand, guys, I, I'm just as real as you are. I hurt just as much as you guys do. I, I go through many battles, and I have a hard time with this. It's not been easy. It has been extremely difficult because I don't, I see it. I see what's coming up ahead, but I don't know how to get there. I really don't because it's beyond me. It really is. What we're doing, guys, what we've been doing for the last nine months is way beyond me. Because I don't have the finances. I don't have the strength. It's not me that's doing this. If you guys would look in behind my eyeballs and see what I'm seeing, you would say, whoa, how is this happening? The only reason why it's happening is because I have found out what is right. I have found out what is good. I have found out that God is for me and not against me. I have found out that He is, he is with me and not against me. You guys are, and because of that, I continue to walk. Amen? But how do I know if I'm pleasing God? How, how do I know that God's for me? How do I know? Well, it's right here. Proverbs 11. Turn with me to Proverbs 11. Lord, be with my voice right now. Break up this, this thing that is trying to <coughs> suffocate me in Jesus' name. I rebuke it. <clears throat> in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Okay, is there Proverbs 11? <clears throat> We're going to start in verse number 1. Now, and I'm going to go through these quickly because there's a lot. Okay? Say a lot. A lot. There's a lot. A lot of And there's more. Verse number one. <clears throat> Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord. But a just weight, what a fair weight, is his delight. So you know what makes God happy? Doing the right thing. Right? Being honest. That's what makes God happy. Amen? Verse number three. <clears throat> the integrity of the upright will guide them. You guys see that? But the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. <clears throat> the word is upright. The word in the Hebrew means is the word yashar. And check this out now. The word yashar means smooth. It means right. It means straight. Yashar. Smooth. See smooth. smooth. Right. right. And straight. Okay? The integrity, the word integrity kind of stands for solidness, right? Being able to stand. The integrity of upright, those that are going down a smooth path, they're going straight and right. Their way will guide them. You guys see that? Woo! Verse number four, that last half of verse number four. The righteous, but righteousness delivers from death. Doesn't say money. Doesn't say ability. It says righteousness. <clears throat> Verse number five. The righteousness of the blameless. You guys see that? You know what makes God happy? When you are found blameless. What does blameless mean? No faults. No faults. You're innocent. Amen? The righteousness of the blameless 
direct their way right now. You guys see that? Verse number six. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them. You guys see a common occurrence in these last three. Each one of them talk about righteousness, and each one of them talk about how it keeps us from destruction. You guys see that? <clears throat> Verse number eight. Here we go again. The righteous are delivered from what? Trouble. Tribulation. Woo! We're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. <clears throat> Verse number nine. But through knowledge, but through knowledge, the righteous will be what? So your righteousness will happen when you have knowledge. Amen? And that knowledge will keep you. You see that? And that's why we're here. We've got to receive everything that we need. Amen? That pleases God. You see, our righteousness does not come from knowledge. It's because of our righteousness that we receive knowledge now. Because before we were righteous, we wouldn't hear God. Come on now. God's our teacher. Amen? The Holy Spirit is our teacher. And if we are being taught by the Holy Spirit, the only reason is is because we've been washed. We've been good. Amen? We've been listening because obedient students listen. Amen? If you're not in line with God, you won't hear the direction that you need to go. You won't know what to do. Why? Because you're not in tune. You're, you've got to have this position. And that's why we sung this song. You've got to have this position of righteousness. That's why you need it. Why? Because, man, it's going to keep your way. It's going to show you the way. It's going to protect you. Amen? Righteousness. That's what I need. Why? Just in these few verses, it's needful that I'm righteous. Amen? <clears throat> Verse 10. When it goes well, with who? Righteous. The righteous. When it goes well, with those who are right with God, what happens to the city? It rejoices. It rejoices. Do you think that's happening in Gaffney? Why? It must not be very really righteous. Or there's a lot of people that don't want God. You see what I'm saying? The reason why we see what we see in Gaffney is because there's a condition of unrighteousness in Gaffney. Can you guys see that? If it was good and right, the city would be rejoicing. It doesn't say that everyone has to be righteous. But those who are righteous are righteous. We're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 11. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted. So not only are they happy, but the city is exalted when the righteous are in their place. Can you guys see that? <clears throat> Verse number 12. But a man of understanding holds his peace. Verse 13. But he who is of a faithful spirit conceals the matter. Verse 14. But in the multitude of counselors, there is what? Safety. Safety. Salvation. Amen. Verse number 18. He who sows righteousness will have what? <clears throat> sure reward as righteousness leads to life amen righteousness leads to life righteousness leads to life that's why I need righteousness amen you guys can go on if you want to I'm thinking we were running out a little bit of time, but there's all the verses are not done yet in verse 11. But today's, what, what is today? 15. 15th. Let's go to Proverbs 15. Mm -hmm. 
and let's see if this thing on righteousness continues. I want to show you how important it is to have righteousness. Amen? <clears throat> Verse number 2. 15.2 The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly. You guys see that? Yeah. Verse number 5. I'm sorry. Verse number 6. In the house of the righteous there is what? Provision. Woo! Woo! Provision! See what I'm saying? When everything's right, God is, God is in the midst. And He's doing everything that... Listen, the Bible does not lie. Amen? We, this is why it's so important that we have righteousness. Verse number 8. But the prayer of the righteous is what? His delight. His delight. God hears prayers, but He really delights in the prayers of the righteous. What does the Bible say about the prayers of the righteous? They exalt. They exalt, right? There's also a scripture that says, but the prayer of the righteous man prevails much. Right? It prevails much. <clears throat> Verse number nine. He who loves Him who follows righteousness. So if you love God, okay, and this goes right to first John. He who says you know that he loves me and, and walks in darkness is a liar. Darkness is not righteousness. Amen. Light is righteousness. Right? He who loves him, who is God, follows righteousness. Right? Verse number 19. The way of the upright is a highway. Now it's not a highway as a interstate. This word highway is a higher way. Okay? You've got a lower way and then a higher way. The way of the upright is a highway. Highway. Amen. Different level. Amen? That's what that word means. <clears throat> Verse number 21. A man of understanding walks uprightly. Verse 24. The way of, the, the way of life winds upward for the wise that he may turn away from hell below. You guys see that? Winds upward to keep you from below. Amen? So there is a higher way. <clears throat> Verse number 28, the heart of the, uh, of the righteous study to show how to answer. Verse 29, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. You guys see that? <clears throat> now, there is a multitude. I, I would say that this word and the person that God is introducing us to is more prevalent in the book of Proverbs than it is any other place in the Bible. So it's very important to God that He finds us righteous. Amen? Now this is before Christ, and, and yet God was still asking, or God wasn't asking. He is, this is a command that we walk upright. Amen? Walk upright before the Lord. Amen? You know, O oh man, what is right. Amen? He expects us to be that way. Why? Because we were made in His image. And in the image of God, He made both man and woman to be upright. Amen? To be able to be right. Listen, this is this is astounding, man. I'm finding out that <clears throat> we've been led into a lie for at least a generation, if not longer. And the, and the lie is, it's called 
uh, <coughs> evolutionary theology. Okay? We've been led to believe that we've been coming from a monkey more than a billion years ago. Okay? And it's taken us this long to finally realize that we are not no longer monkeys. Hello? That is a lie from the pit of hell. You guys know that. Because the Bible says that man has only been around for about 6,000 years. And in that process of time, we were once perfected. We were not a caveman. We were perfected beings. Our mind, if you guys know, our mind is able to function at a higher rate than what we've presently been able to do. Okay, they found out that Albert Einstein was only using 10% of his brain. Albert Einstein, who is probably one of the more brilliant people in our lifetime, was only using 10% of his brain. So if we're seeing him at 10%, where are we at? I'm just saying. I'm just I, I'm just saying, guys. Look, 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 look. Look at all these cell phones and everything else, right? Smartphones. It's kind of sad that this thing has become smarter than us. That was more much more than But you guys understand. And yet this technology right here does not compare, does not even touch the engineering feats that we see with the pyramids. I'm serious. The pyramids have been around roughly 4,000 years. Hold on. We ain't going there since we I do have a... But, but listen, listen. Just think about this. With all of our technology, with all of our wisdom, with all of our understanding, we cannot duplicate the pyramids. We can't do it. We can't. It's a marvel and a mystery. There's rocks with the Incas in South America that are so precise. How they do that? You know, we're talking three to five thousand years ago okay their minds were more intricately usable than what we're doing today they have to be whether they had some kind of supernatural help i tend to say yes to all of this because and that's a whole different lesson by itself okay because we lord help me we are not using what God is giving us. We don't need the help from aliens and angels. We are actually been given an opportunity to stand and to have a seat that is higher than every principality, every power on earth and in heaven. Seriously. But we act like mere men, the Bible says. And we're not acting as the sons of God. See, the sons of God are righteous. The sons of God are pure. The sons of God have knowledge. The sons of God have wisdom. The sons of God are, are rightly directing their way. And everything they do prospers. Come on now. That's what Christ has given us. It says in Ephesians that we are no longer slaves. We are now seated with Christ in heavenly places. We're no longer down here. We're up here. Hello? And we have the mind of Christ now. We don't have any dilapidated mind. We have the mind of Christ. Amen? And that's where we're heading to, if we're not quite there yet. Listen, I, I, I've had this book for years. Never opened it. 
and it's been laying around, laying around, and, and listen, I don't necessarily, uh, I'm not necessarily a student of Kenneth Hagin. I do know that he was a man that did some good ministry, right? He was kind of before my time. Uh, <clears throat> What he says in the very first page of the first chapter, just wow. <coughs> Listen to this. And he's talking about the triumphant church. Do we not want to be the triumphant church? What does triumphant mean? Successful. Successful. Victorious. Victorious. Winners. Amen? Winners. We win. If you guys read the book, we win. We've already won. But the mindset is still not quite there. He, listen, since the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has the triumphant, uh, and the victory over the devil and his cohorts in every encounter, why does it seem so many believers are subject to Satan and his deceptions? If we are the triumphant church, if, see, there's that question, are we? Yes! I am going through the storm, brothers. But it's not because I'm thinking that we're going to win. We've already won. Back in February, the decision was made, and I am victorious. I'm just now proving it and setting up shop because the devil does not want me here. Come on now. Wasn't that decision cast in the court? Was it not uh, overturned in court? I'm on the right side now, brother. They tried to stop me by using the, the law against me. But see, my wisdom tells me that this law that they had created was not a just and right law. And I found some attorneys, brother, that were going to help me move in that direction and make things right. Why? Because I know what is right. <coughs> My Bible declares that the righteous will inherit, <coughs> not the unrighteous. Amen? And so I came up against them. What happened? They're scared. Why? Because I know the law. You know why people don't do anything? It's because they don't know. Come on now. I'm standing up. Because I know I'm right. Come on now. And I'm continuing. Why? Because I know I'm right. Whether or not believers are victorious over the devil depends on what their view is of themselves and the church. Come on now. Can I read that again? Whether or not believers are victorious over the devil depends on what their view is over themselves and the church. Why do we struggle? It's because of what we believe is what we see right there's three things and if you guys have got a pencil and a pen i want you guys to write these three things down because these three things are important guys you need to understand why we struggle we shouldn't be struggling because we are victorious amen we are righteous man we're kings and priests brother we are up the head and not the tail Mm. We are to go before and not lag behind. We are blessed in the city, blessed in the field. We are blessed wherever we go. Our bread basket is blessed. Amen? I 
know it, guys. And I'm fighting. There's three different mindsets. <clears throat> it all depends on how well we understand our position in Christ. Okay? There's three mindsets. There is the militant church. The militant church. Militant sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Sounds like we're, we're gearing up. We're the army of God. We've got our swords. We've got our rifles. I, I'm just saying, militant. You know, that happened in 1860, brother. It happened. God had something right in store. God was using the Holy Spirit. There was a, a great awakening happening in 1860. And it was called the Great Revival of the 1860s. God, a second great awakening was happening. And there was a move in the Spirit, man. The Methodists and the Presbyterians were going crazy. People were being slain in the Spirit. And many were being delivered, especially here in the South. You know why? Because God was making something wrong that was wrong into something right. You know what that was, brother? It was called the end of slavery. Come on now. In 1860, God already prepared a group of people. They were called ministers of the gospel. And they were proclaiming liberty to the captives. Come on now. They were proclaiming liberty. They were causing people and churches to come up, man. And, and you know what? The reason why things changed was because there was a group of people that wouldn't just keep it in the spirit. They had to get militant. You know what these guys were called? Abolitionists. And the name sounded really good, brother. Because the, the name implies that they want to abolish slavery. Sounded real good, right? Sounded real good. Abolitionists, man. They, but they became militant. And they took up the sword. And guess what happened? The Civil War broke out. You think God's about war? Come on. Help me out now. You think God's about war? No. God doesn't need war to win. He's already won. Come on. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and, and uh, uh, positions of authority in high places. Amen? Come on. God is not pleased with war. If He was, Jesus would have had a war back in his time. And he would have won. He didn't need to have physical violence. You don't show authority by physical violence. You show authority by your word. Come on. Jesus spoke a word. And demons flee. Come on now. He didn't have a sword. He even told Peter, Peter, put down your sword. If you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Come on now. He was making things right. But there's a militant mindset. And the militant church depicts a body of believers who are not yet seated in heavenly places and are still battling to try to gain victory over the enemy that hasn't been defeated yet by the Lord Jesus Christ. You guys see that mindset? Is it here in our community? Is it here in our nation? Yes. You bet it is. You know why? Because we don't we don't think, we don't, we don't understand that we're not down here. We're seated where? In heavenly places. We don't need to battle. The battle's already been won. Come on now. We don't need to pick it anymore. All we need is to pray. 
Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me my, my voice back. Amen. Amen? We don't need to pick it, brother. That's a militant way of doing things. We're thinking that we have to take over. We've already taken over. God has given us all authority over everything. Come on. We don't need to be militant. The second one's even worse. It's called the defeated church. <clears throat> the defeated church gives us a picture of a church which is ignorant of the fact that they are seated with Christ and they are supposed to be reigning in life through Christ because they are ignorant of their position in Christ or they have never used the authority that, is, uh, that they really possess. These believers are constantly being ravaged by the wiles of the devil and are in a state of continual failure and defeat. That doesn't sound like a triumphant church. You guys see, but that's the mindset. See, again, there are people in the church that don't know. They're not confident. They don't understand that they have to be righteous. Amen? Righteousness delivers from death. Righteousness leads us to life. Righteousness, righteousness. But you know what happens is the devil continually, continually bombards us. And the reason is is because we don't know the difference. Listen, it tells us in here that we, we don't understand that we have authority and power. And we're not using it. Come on now. Instead of praying for yourself, we're asking other people to pray. Why? God has given you the same authority that He's given me. The same Holy Spirit that's in me is the same Holy Spirit in you. Come on. Is He not? The same measure I have is the same measure you have. The only difference is that I have understood and I have learned and I now am able to have more confidence because I have been skilled in it. Amen? How many of us will start a new job and not be confident in that job? Yeah. Why? Because you're not skilled. Once you get more skilled, once you begin to learn what you need to do, who you are, and what you need to do, you will be more confident. Before too long, you'll be a master of that, of that position, right? That's the same thing here, guys. What I'm doing is getting you into a, a place of learning so that you can begin to overcome the wiles of the devil. You don't have to. You don't need me. God's already with you. Right? Is He not? If He isn't, you need to make sure that He is. Because the only way that we have righteousness anyway is through Christ. Right? When we pray that prayer and ask God to forgive us, we then, at that present time, have that opportunity to be in right standing with God. Right? The devil no longer has any control over us once we are placed in Christ. Amen? I'm serious. <clears throat> stand right here. Okay? Action. This is my beautiful wife, as you guys can see. Right? As you guys can understand, <clears throat> what if my wife had some uh, had some apparel that wasn't necessarily 
good. No, okay? Just think about that, okay? You can put any kind of apparel on her, okay? Uh, just, just, just imagine, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and then let's place her in a position uh, that is inferior, okay, in your eyes. Whatever you would think would be inferior, okay? Uh, <clears throat> I, I'm just saying, we can even put her on our street corner. Now, now listen, hold up, hold, listen. Listen, listen, please. Uh, please listen. What you guys are thinking is crazy, right? Why? Because you know my wife. There's a problem with that picture, right? Why? Because you know my wife. My wife wouldn't do that. Why? Because she is a daughter of Christ. She knows it. He knows it. And she would never <coughs> present herself in that way. You guys know it. You see? So why would we be any different than her? Now put yourself up here. Thank you. Come here. Now put yourself up here. Okay? Bring in the same format and the same picture. I'm just saying, I know it sounds crazy, but you know what? That's the image that we have of ourselves at times. Okay? When Christ has cleaned us up, when Christ has made us whole, when Christ has done all these really neat things and made us right in His eyes, we still go outside and we do things and we say things and we present ourselves in such a way that is not holy, that is not good, that is not righteous. And then we wonder why we struggle. You see what I'm saying? It's a mindset. And God says we're victorious. God says we are seated with Him in heavenly places. We shouldn't be struggling. We should be learning so that we can stand and be able to do the things that Christ has already given us the power and authority to do. Amen. Amen? It's called being righteous. Being in right standing with God. Because when you're good, you're good. You would never see this man on the point. You would never see this man doing anything out of context. You know why? Because you're, you're, you're beginning to know this guy. Right? And what if he was found doing something? Listen, you wouldn't be over there saying, No, you would go over there and say, Hey, brother, follow me. Let's do something else. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because you're, you're protecting him. Come on now. A brother helps another brother. Right? A friend helps another friend. Your enemy now, they don't care. They don't care about your position. They don't care about your clothes. They don't care where you sit. They will destroy you. They will harm you and hurt you. You guys see that? You guys get in the picture. Thank you, sir. Now, go with me to Matthew. Oh, I'm sorry, Luke. Luke. Sunday. <laughs> and the third one is triumph. Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> the third one is triumph. Luke, what? The triumph of church is a biblical perspective of the body of Christ seated with Christ heavenly places. 
which is found in Ephesians chapter 1. The triumphant church spiritually betrays the body of believers who not only know, but exercise their authority in Christ, and therefore reign victoriously in life. You guys see that? See, we sing the song, I'm no longer a slave. But do we live as we're no longer slaves? I, I'm just saying, but the mindset's got to change, right? If we're no longer in the position, then we need to start acting like it, right? If He's called us the Son, guess what? We're moving up into that position of being a son. Amen? Now, it takes training. Listen, I, I'm a son by birth. But that doesn't mean that my position as a son starts at birth. My position takes time. Come on now. My dad tried to give me a position as a son when I was 15. Like, like a lot of us, we get this position. I'm now a man. Right? And what happens to us, men? What happens to us? Why? Because we haven't been trained. I, I've never been trained to be a man. I, 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 I'm just being honest. It took me another 15 years to find out what a man is. It took me another 20 years to find out what love was. Come on now. Now I, I know. Now I'm able. Now I can be positioned as a son, and I won't mess things up. Amen? God isn't going to give you a position you can't handle yet. Hello? Jesus Christ. Why? Because it's going to give me power unto salvation. Amen? I'm not only saved, but you will be too. Amen? Come on! We are victorious! We are an apostolic church. That means that He's given us authority and power to take over and to subdue and to destroy every work of the enemy. We are an apostolic church. Amen. We just need to start believing it and then living it and then experiencing it and doing it. I know it says it in here, but is it in here? If it's in here, it'll be in here. I'm serious. It'll be coming through your fingers. It'll be going down your toes. I'll be coming out your mouth. Come on now. Whatever we speak, it happens, right? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Right? Whatever you speak, brothers and sisters, whatever you say is going to happen. That's why we've got to be careful. That's why God says speak life. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life unto yourself. Amen. Come on. Until you overcome, until you see yourself prosper, don't curse yourself. Bless yourself. Amen. Come on now. Why? Because that's who you are. Amen? You might have to tell yourself, Self, let's get in control in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? You don't have to either yourself will control you or you will control yourself. What does the Bible say? What is one of the gifts of the Spirit? Self-control. Self one of the gifts of the Spirit is self-control. Listen, if you have the Spirit, you can tell yourself no. Come on now. Why? Because I'm a child of the King. I'm not supposed to be down there with the paupers anymore. I'm up here with the princes. Amen? I am a prince. I am. You're a princess. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Come on. You are. That's what the word says. That's what the Bible says. Okay? Listen, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But that's why you're here. 
one day you will see yourself as Christ sees you. Okay? You know, Christ doesn't condemn you. You know what happens in Romans? I'm sorry, in John chapter 3? You know what happens? You condemn yourself. You know why? Because you see who you're supposed to be, but you see who you are. And it doesn't line up. Am I right? So condemnation comes because you see yourself not where you need to be. So repent. John says repent and believe in the gospel. What is the gospel? That you don't have to be a slave anymore. Repent. Change your way of thinking. That's what repentance means. It doesn't mean that you say to yourself, no, you change your way of thinking and then you start walking differently. Amen? Amen? And you keep on doing it and keep on doing it and keep on doing it until you do it right. Amen? Amen? And, and that's how you gain confidence, brothers. You, you, you gain confidence by doing the right thing over and over and over and over and over until it becomes a habit and the habit becomes a lifestyle. Amen? How do you think you became who you are? It's because of, you kept on doing the same thing over and over and over. It became a habit, and now the habit became a lifestyle. Well, change your way of thinking. Amen? Break the chains. Break the yoke in Jesus' name. It has already been broken. Amen? And start believing in the gospel. God's already done this. He's broken every chain. He's been given the keys of the kingdom. And He's giving us the keys of the kingdom. So that we can go and preach the gospel to the poor. You don't have to be poor anymore. Amen? Come on now. I'm not all about a necessarily abused prosperity gospel. But I do believe in prosperity. Why the Bible keeps on talking that the righteous prosper. Righteous are doing good. Everything the righteous do is blessed. Come on now. That's prosperity. What's happening today is an abuse of that prosperity. Come on now. And that's why Benny Head is changing his way of thinking. Praise God. Hello. I wish everyone else would see the same thing. And then instead of hoarding all this money and building all these houses and these million dollar, billion dollar churches, we go and preach the gospel and start feeding people and taking care of people. Come on now. One single jet that would cost $54 million. $54 million can take a, 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 a group of 20 people Every single month for 20 years, you could go somewhere and preach the gospel. Anywhere on earth. You can take 20 people on a mission trip every week for 20 years. And this guy wants to take his jet and take himself to make sure that he gets there. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, does it? You can do more with 20 people than you can with one. If my mathematics is right. Because one plus one equals two. 20 times. We can do a heck of a lot more with the money that we're wasting. Amen? I'm just saying, guys. And, but listen, this is my final point. If and when we do get this money. If and when. Because it is conditional. We're not going to be right and act right. God's not going to give it to us. Because he's sick and tired of, of seeing people abuse his money. He wants things done right. That's why this the whole thing is being exposed. I'm serious. Praise God. Because they're getting right now. 
They have the opportunity to get right now and not have to go before the judge and have to answer for everything. Come on now. You see what I'm saying? There's a wrath of God coming, guys. There's a wrath of God coming. You know what? Woo! Woo! <coughs> look, 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 look. Uh, uh. Where's it at? Verse 18. Romans 1 18. Thank you, Lord. Romans 1 18. You think God's day of judgment is coming? Oh, yes. Why is it coming? Why? right here you know what it says it's right here for the wrath of God is revealed being opened up from heaven against what all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men so if you think God is is really trying to get Drive in a point about being righteous. Help, help me out, guys. Yes. This thing is real. He's not coming after us because we're sinning. He's coming after us because we're not righteous. There's a difference. Sinning means that we're, we're, we're at this mentality that we're being given over to the devil. Righteous means, unrighteousness means that we're not doing what we know is right. And we've been given the power to do it and we're not doing it. There is a difference. I'm not being succumbed by the devil. But I will convict myself of unrighteousness if I don't do what I know is right. And God has given me the power to do what is right. And I still don't do it. He's coming after, and He's going to judge us according to ungodliness, which means not being like God, and unrighteousness, which means not being doing things the right way. You guys see that? The wrath of God is being revealed against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. You guys see that? You know what happens, guys? And this is to the church now. This is to the church. He's writing to the Roman church. He's talking about people in church. Hello? He's not talking about the world. The world's already. He's not talking to them. He's talking to us. I'm serious. Go to Revelation. What's the first two chapters in Revelation? Chapter 2 and chapter 3. Who's he talking to? The church. the church. Listen, I see that you guys are doing some good things, but you know, I have this against you. Hello? Get it right or else I'll take your candlestick. Hello? You guys understand? A judgment is coming. And it's coming to, upon the church first. And the reason is, is because we know better. Especially you guys. You guys are listening to good stuff. This ain't no prosperity gospel. This ain't no uh, tickle my fancy ear gospel. This is this ain't sugar coat. I'm not sugar. Never have been a sugar coat. I don't like sugar. You know what happens? We become diabetics. Hello? I'm not into that, guys. You know why? I'm going to be judged according to every single word that I speak out of this pulpit. I'm going to be judged and held accountable to everything. And listen, guys, i got to tell the truth. God is coming after people who are Righteous and holy. He's coming after a bride who's spotless. He's coming after a, a people who love the Lord with all their heart. Amen. But judgment is coming. 
And it probably is already here. If I can just be honest. Because I've seen that things are already being revealed. The unrighteousness is being revealed. I'm serious. You know why we don't have any authority? over the LGBT or any other community, whether it be this, you know why? Because we are not seated in a place of authority. We can't speak against sin because we are still in sin. If we were righteous, we could speak. And the reason is, is because there's nothing held against us. See what I'm saying? But because we're still in sin, we can't say anything. Because we are in fear of being exposed. Hello. Come on now. That's why we have to get right. What does Romans 12 say? That we should present ourselves, right? Holy and acceptable. See what I'm saying? Pleasing to God. If you can do that every day, I mean every day. It has to be every day. Because you can't be one way one day and another day you're somebody else. you got to be the same way every day. Christ in you will give you that opportunity to be that way every day. Amen? Come on now. I know you You may not be there. You may not have the bag of chips yet. But you know what? You're growing. And as long as you're growing, that's okay. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus for those who are in Christ. Amen? See, if you're a babe in Christ, you're not being held accountable to someone who's been at it for 30 years. You're being held accountable for what you know is right right now. Am I right? You need to know what you need to do what you need to do here. Because God is not going to give you anything else to deal with until you're perfected in this thing first. If you can't get this right, you're not going to be able to handle the, the true riches. Come on now. How, how can you handle a thousand dollars when you can't even handle the ten? I'm just saying. There's more opportunity. But it takes a strong man. It takes a strong woman who has the faith, who has the ability, who has the courage to stand and to do what's right. They can handle the true riches. Amen? Watch and see. Watch and see. God is establishing trees of righteousness. Amen? Isaiah 61. Are you guys a tree? Are you in right standing with God? I'm just saying. Let's get it right. Amen? Let's get it right. Let's make things right. Let's repent if we have to. But let us not leave through these doors without making sure that we're pleasing to God. Because righteousness is first. Without righteousness, you can't live this life. And if you, if, if you struggle in that, then repent. <coughs> Turn from your wicked ways and repent. Turn and start doing the right thing. That's all God requires. Amen? I'm serious. You know what is right, old man? To do rightly, to walk justly, and to walk humbly with your God. Right? You see what I'm saying? There's nothing hard about this. He's not asking us to do something that we cannot do. He's just asking for obedience. Can we be that way this morning? Amen? Let us all stand. Come on up there.